A kid from a wealthy family and a kid from a poor family both turn five years old. Their brains look different. Not because of genetics, not because one is smarter, but because of something way more disturbing, and it starts way earlier than you think. What neuroscience just discovered about this brain gap is going to make you rethink everything about inequality. This isn't about rich kids being better or poor kids being worse. It's about what poverty does to a developing brain and how wealth protects against it. Scientists can now see the actual physical differences in brain structure between kids from different economic backgrounds, and the gap starts before they can even talk. If that doesn't piss you off, you're not paying attention. Here's what they found. Kids growing up in poverty have smaller brain structures in areas responsible for memory, emotion regulation, and learning. Not a little smaller, measurably, significantly smaller. And this isn't about intelligence or potential. It's about stress, chronic, unrelenting stress that literally changes how the brain develops. Think about what a poor kid's brain is processing. Will there be food tomorrow? Why are mom and dad always fighting about money? Why did we have to move again? That's not occasional stress. That's constant threat detection. And when your brain is stuck in survival mode, it can't focus on learning, on growing, on developing normally. Meanwhile, a wealthy kid's brain is free to just develop. No food insecurity, no housing instability, no constant worry about basic needs. Their brain gets to focus on curiosity, exploration, learning. They're not wasting brain power on survival because survival isn't a question. But it gets worse. Poor kids are exposed to more toxins, lead paint, air pollution, contaminated water. Their neighborhoods are louder, more chaotic, more dangerous. All of that affects brain development. Wealthy kids, they're in cleaner environments, quieter neighborhoods, safer spaces. Their brains get to develop without all that interference. Then there's the word gap. By age three, kids from wealthy families have heard 30 million more words than kids from poor families. 30 million. That's not because poor parents don't love their kids. It's because they're working multiple jobs, exhausted, stressed, trying to survive. They don't have time for constant conversation and reading and enrichment. And all those extra words, they're literally building neural pathways. More words mean more connections in the language centers of the brain. Which means by the time these kids hit kindergarten, the wealthy kid already has a massive advantage, not because they're smarter, but because their brain had more raw material to work with. Here's what really gets me. We act like education is the great equalizer, but these kids are showing up to school with fundamentally different brains. The poor kid's brain is wired for threat detection and survival. The wealthy kid's brain is wired for learning and exploration. And then we wonder why there's an achievement gap. The wealthy kid also gets tutors, enrichment programs, music lessons, sports, all things that stimulate brain development. The poor kid? They're lucky if they get a stable place to sleep. We're not comparing apples to apples here. And the really messed up part? This gap compounds. The wealthy kid gets into better schools, which further develops their brain. The poor kid falls behind, gets labeled as slow or difficult, gets less attention. By high school, the brain gap is massive, not because of any inherent difference, but because of years of completely different environments. So what do we do about this? First, stop pretending this is about individual choice or work ethic. This is about what stress and poverty do to developing brains before kids even have a chance to make choices. It's structural, not personal. Second, early intervention matters. The first five years of life are critical for brain development. Investing in poor kids during those years nutrition programs, stable housing, quality child care, can actually close the brain gap before it becomes permanent. Third, stop judging poor kids for struggling in school when their brains have been developing under conditions that make learning harder. They're not lazy or stupid. 
They're dealing with neurological disadvantages that wealthy kids never face. And if you're a parent who can provide stability, nutrition, enrichment for your kid, recognize that as the massive privilege it is. Your kid's brain is developing in optimal conditions that most kids don't get. The brain gap is real. It's measurable. And it's not about genetics or intelligence. It's about what poverty does to a developing brain versus what wealth protects against. That's not a gap. That's an injustice. And now that neuroscience can see it, we can't pretend it doesn't exist.